Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. I'm here in the park in Newcastle with Lily. She's a pagan and she's going to tell us a bit about paganism and I'm going to tell her a bit about Islam. It should be very interesting, so let's kick off. Lily, you're a pagan. Yep. What's all that about? But paganism is quite a big umbrella term that covers a lot of different faiths that are around in the UK today. The main thing that groups these faiths together is that they're usually polytheistic in belief and normally they hark back to ancestral or indigenous worship of different deities. Paganism is worldwide. Um, obviously in, in Britain people tend to have more things in common because of that indigenous aspect. Um, it tends to be split into two main groups. We have the ceremonial groups which tended to come into being around the 1940s with the um, reinvigoration of modern witchcraft with things like Wicca. And then we also have the more sort of traditionalist path where you have sort of the Anglo-Saxon um, gods being brought in as well as heathen and Norse and, and many others. So it's, uh, it's not just one religion, it's a, a multitude of beliefs and practices you would say, yes? It's, it's, it's a group of different sort of beliefs and practices that are all brought together with a few sort of, that come together because of a few common, common okay. threads. Well, how long have you been in the, the old paganism? Um, I've been practicing this paganism since I was about 18, so about 10 years now. Wow, okay. Very interesting. About, about the same amount of time I've been a, a Muslim, <laughs> interestingly enough. Now, uh, Lily, you, you mentioned that um, pagans uh, are, are polytheists. They, yes. they, they worship um, uh, more than one god, and that is kind of the opposite of Islam. <laughs> um, we're, we're monotheists. Yeah. We believe that everything, including nature, which we have respect for, um, we as Muslims are commanded to have respect for nature, but we believe all of it has been created and is being sustained by one unique being, who we call Allah, and uh, you as, a, as an English woman might call God. Yeah. Um, so we believe that, <clears throat> seeing her as, as how, um, excuse me, <clears throat> Allah or God is the creator and sustainer of everything, according to what we believe, we believe there's no point in worshipping anything other than him, yeah. because he, we believe, is the one who makes the, the, the clouds form and makes the rain fall and then makes the corn grow. Yes. So we don't see any point in worshipping the corn or the rain or the sun. Yeah. We believe we should worship the one, the force behind all that, yes. which is Almighty God or Allah. What, 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 do you, what do you think about that? What are your feelings on that? Um, I mean, is paganism kind of, as you said, is, is polytheistic? We kind of believe in worshipping the the gods as they are. We also, it is sometimes described as nature worship, but I think sometimes a better way would be nature respect. Okay. We don't believe that people were placed on this earth and it was given to us as custodians. We believe that the gods came into being, the earth came into being and we sprang from the earth. Mm. And we believe that the earth and the people on it and the gods have a unique relationship, a unique balance. Um, and it, there's not so much the creator element of it. But we believe that everything in, in the earth and between the earth and the gods kind of coexists um, in the work together. And the main things that we, we look to do is try and keep that balance there. Okay. And as a pagan, um, what sort of things do you actually do? I mean, do you, uh, do you pray? Do you, uh, do you perform um, rites of worship? How, how do you put your pagan beliefs into practice? Um, I mean, the, there's the, the Wheel of the Year celebrations, which are the ones commonly marked. Some paths will only mark four of them. Um, but generally, the, the pagan um, festivals revolve around the changings of the seasons because that's how we see kind of a big divine influence on the world, if you like. You know, that always happens, and we believe that happens because of the divine. And there's this reassuring element of it that, you know, it is there that's why it's happening um, we, some pagans will practice solitary where they will just have rituals at home, some in family groups and there's also a very big pagan community in the UK and we do gather together in very big groups sometimes Stonehenge and things there's like that Stonehenge and the Solstice but there's, there's different sort of, um, sites and groups throughout the UK okay. very interesting, thanks for that Lily um, now we've spoken about beginnings I mentioned we as Muslims we believe Everything that exists has its uh, origin in one creator, Allah, who is neither man nor woman, cat nor dog, uh, bird nor beast, completely unique. And uh, you um, mentioned uh, what you as a pagan believe are the origins of, of, of life as we know it. 
what happens next? What happens after the event which none of us can deny? No one in, a, in the right mind can deny. I'm talking, of course, about death. Yeah. What do you believe comes after this great event in every person's life? Personally, I mean, it does vary slightly from one pagan to another. Like I've said, it's a huge umbrella too. Um, but most pagans do believe in kind of that there is something there. Um, it's often talked about as the summer lands. And it's a place that you return to. Um, sometimes you stay there for indeterminate amounts of time and then you can choose to return. So when you return, you have no memories of like, what you were here for before. But, but when you return to the summer lands, to that collective energy, that being then you, you have all those experiences with you when you evolve as, as a okay. spiritual okay. being that way. Now, um, that's, uh, that's interesting actually. Um, this summer land, um, it sounds, or it reminds me of the Islamic concept of, of paradise, which we call Jannah. We believe that the, the righteous man or woman, when they die, they will go on to, uh, to, to the gardens of paradise. However, where I would uh, differ with you is that we believe there is no return, there's no going back. Once a person goes into paradise, a person who has submitted to Allah, the, the, the Creator, and uh, led a life pleasing to Him, once they go into paradise after death, they'll never be asked to leave, and they'll never want to leave. We don't believe paradise is some eternal monastery, or you know, uh, like uh, living in, um, in in Rome for all eternity. No, we believe paradise is paradise. It's party time for all eternity. <laughs> And so uh, the, the, the garden or the land of summer, it kind, it kind of conjures up images which to me are similar to the Islamic concept of paradise. But I would say that we as Muslims, we believe a righteous person uh, who has submitted to the Creator, they will never be asked to leave paradise. And uh, that's, that, that's the goal of every Muslim. Um, right, what's next on my uh, agenda, Lily? So Lily, when you uh, perform uh, ceremonies and have uh, gatherings or whatnot, have you ever experienced anything of the supernatural? You would. I mean, I wouldn't kind of call it supernatural. I'd probably call it spiritual, but a lot of people would refer to it as, as supernatural. Um, the kind of um, practice that I do, it, it harks back to um, an Anglo-Saxon class called Altes, and it's about crossing the veil and thinning the veil between the worlds and being able to experience that closeness to the divine. Um, so you do get a lot of kind of very spiritual moments where you would see things, you would be presented with, with visions, you would be given messages. Um, and yes, it, it is a very um, it is a, a very kind of moving and very affirming experience to go through. Have you ever heard of a species called the jinn? Yes. <laughs> the jinn, um, I mentioned it in the Quran, yeah. and it's nothing spooky really. They are basically a species created by God which are similar to humans, but they have some different abilities. And generally speaking, they live, you could, you could see it, on, another, on, a, on a parallel dimension, on another dimension to humans. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, the, the two worlds uh, cross over or collide, but generally speaking, they live in one world and we live in another, and rarely do the twin meet. But I would say that um, pagans and, uh, and people involved in witchcraft, when they have these quite uh, sometimes terrifying, sometimes perhaps very moving, supernatural or spiritual experiences, I would say it may well be that they are coming in contact mm -hmm. with the jinn. What do you think of that? It, it, it's quite similar to the, the pagan belief in, in the other worlds, and especially when you get to kind of the Norse and heathen mythology, you get kind of the world tree, and the upper world, the middle world, and the lower world. Um, and I think that the main difference is that rather than just we believe that it runs alongside us, is that we believe that it runs alongside us with a purpose. Okay. And we can, we can interact with it and we can influence change and in that way. Very interesting. Well, Lily, it's been a gas, as they say. It's been <laughs> fantastic. Um, to uh, to uh, put the icing on the cake, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I would like to present you with this. This is um, it's a, an Aira gift box. Uh, courtesy of IDC, Islamic Diversity Centre in Newcastle. It's got some information about what we, Islamic Diversity Centre, do, and also some information about Islam and, uh, and that sort of thing, in case you're interested. So that's for you, Lily. It's been uh, fantastic. Uh, thank you thank very you. much. It's been lovely.